Hello, I'm Dr. Nathan Barnes. Thanks for your interest in my course, uh, The New Testament History, Religion 1302, Summer 2014. Just wanted to introduce you to the syllabus so that you know exactly what you're getting into if you're interested in this and pursuing it further. Um, first, a little bit about me. Um, I graduated in 2012 with a PhD in New Testament from Bright Divinity School, and that's affiliated with Texas Christian University in Fort Worth, Texas. I graduated from Wayland in 2001 with a BA and again in 2003 with an MA and then went on to PhD studies. I recently published a book. Uh, it's called Reading 1 Corinthians with Philosophically Educated Women. And that's my uh, revised dissertation. I studied philosophy in the ancient world and you ask the question, what would, what would it be like for women to read Paul who have some kind of philosophical background? So um, I'm really excited about that, and I'm excited about this course. I've been teaching it for two years uh, since I graduated, and um, it's been a lot of fun. Okay, you know when, it, when this class begins and ends. Um, I, I want to let you know about the required readings. Uh, this NIV study Bible is required by the religion department. It's the Bible that we decided to use um, you know, so that every religion class uses the same Bible. So it's important that you have that, obviously. We're going to read through the New Testament in this course. The other book is Bruce Metzger, the New Testament, its background, growth, and content. We are reading that the first week of class. So please, if you're interested in this course, uh, pur purchase your textbooks. I I purposefully um, chose Metzger because he's cheap, and you can get him off Amazon for maybe ten dollars. You can also uh, it's available by ebook sometimes. Um, it's not available everywhere, so you, it would take you a little while to find it for ebook. So don't uh, don't assume that you can find it on an ebook at the last minute because it's very difficult to find. So you're going to need your textbooks. You're going to read them, and I'm going to I'm going to test you on them. So this isn't a class where I'm requiring you to read a textbook and we never use it. Okay, there's four learning objectives. Um, this sounds like a mouthful, but my goal is to uh, help you talk about the New Testament intelligently. And what that means is you're, I'm going to give you some historical knowledge, some theological background, um, some knowledge about how the New Testament came together so you can have a conversation with someone about this topic if someone, if you, if you ever get asked. You know, there's always something going on with the Bible in our culture and you can, you can uh, talk knowing about the original context uh, having taken this course. Now, having said that, we are only we're only going to talk about the major points, you know, the the high points. I've, I've had a class on every book in the New Testament, and just that alone is a lot of work. But we're going to be talking about the smaller things like culture and and uh, religious aspects and uh, his proof in history about something that you know there's there's just mountains of literature written about that stuff, and we're just gonna we're just gonna touch on it. So that way you can have an intelligent conversation. You know, you're not going to be talking with, with uh, I don't, in, I'm not preparing you for, um, you know, going and talking with scholars about all this stuff. I'm preparing you to talk with people just like you. So, but you'll have the advantage of having had a course. So there's four things that we do. Uh, okay, hang on just a second. Okay, back up. There are course requirements, um, and there are four things we do every week. Uh, the first thing you do is you read the textbook, you listen to the lecture. I have YouTube lectures, uh, one YouTube lecture a week. They're about uh, between one hour and one hour and 45 minutes. And then you do a 300-word reading review on what you've read. And I give you a detailed outline of how to do that. So you're going to know exactly what you're doing in the reading review. Basically, I tell you to... Uh, I, get, I tell you to create two writing prompts and do 150 words on one prompt and 150 words on another prompt. So it's very it's very easy. It's not as difficult as it might look. Um, 250 words is a standard printed page, and 
Um, so it's just a little bit longer than a page, but it's it's a lot of fun. Okay, and then in the in the discussion board, um, what we do is we have four posts, just four posts that are required each week. One post will respond to a question that I ask the class. I'm going to ask three. You can choose one. So you you post one post there, and then you respond three times to other students. So every week in the discussion forum, I post three questions for the class. You can address one of those questions. You don't have to answer it. You just have to talk about it, address it. And then you come back and you address other student responses. Piece of cake. You know, for those of you who are active on the internet, um, that is nothing. Okay, weekly blog, blog entry. I only need 100 words. And basically, I want to know your reflections on the week, on what you've learned, and, you know, what made you angry, what made you sad, you know, anything. That yeah, that's your area. Basically, the blog entry is your extra credit for the course to kind of pad your grade, uh, you know, just in case. But you got to do it. Um, there's going to be two exams. Originally, I built this course with just a final exam, and I thought that's not fair to the student because it would be 25 percent of your grade, and it would be right at the end of the class, and um, there would be no opportunity to learn from it. You know, if you have a midterm, you can get to know me a little bit better. You know what, how I do my exams. It, but I'm going to tell you exactly how I do it. But you know, taking it is a different story. And then you can take the final exam, and hopefully do better. Uh, the downside of that is it's going to cost you uh, thirty dollars total, fifteen dollars for the midterm, fifteen for the final. You're not paying me. You're paying a, if you want, you're paying a third party um, internet. Um, company to proctor the exam. So um, I will give you more information on that. This is required by the religion department. Um, it's not something that uh, that I have ever done before, but I appreciate its uh, its value. Uh, so we'll know who you are, and uh, the test will have more integrity, which means that your your degree from Wayland will have more integrity. So anyway, that's something that we're doing. So the midterm exam is going to cover weeks one through five. The final exam is going to cover weeks six through ten, and the timelines that I give you. I give you a lot of extra material, like a, well, not a whole lot, but I give you some timelines, and I give you some uh, some other extra stuff that's not in the textbook, and that's going to be on the final exam. So you're going to know that well in advance. You're expected to meet deadlines. Um, especially the midterm and the final, but I don't accept late work. And the reason why I don't accept late work is because this class is organic. We're, we are having live discussions each week about the topics. You know, if you try to turn in week four on week six, we're not talking about that anymore. You know, you can't respond to a student and a student is not going to respond back to you. You know, there's no conversation. So uh, basically, the course only lives each week. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't continue on, you know, week one and week eight. So um, please turn your work in on time. Now, if you get deployed or if uh, something comes up, I have some stuff that we can work out. But um, it would be better for you and better for the class if everybody did their work uh, on time. So I got course evaluation. Y'all are familiar with that. Okay, there are the five elements of the class. We have the reading reviews average. That's 20% of your grade. Blog postings average, 20% of the grade. Discussion postings together, 20%. And now look at this: the final exam and the midterm are worth a lot. You know, you're going to have a, you're going to have 10 uh, 10 sets of discussions that are 20% of your grade. You also have one midterm that's 20% of your grade, so you're going to need to study for that, and I will help you. I will help you with that. You'll know exactly what to study, and exactly what I expect. But uh, you can't take it lightly there. And another thing students have done is I've had students that were wonderful students, but they ignore completely ignored one of the components of the course, like they never did their blog postings. Well, that's 20. That's 20% of the grade, so they're starting out with an 80. 
you know, if you add all this this other stuff up, and you know, if they did poorly on any on the two exams, they their grade is just going to be terrible. So you need to really pay attention and and do the work. It's not too much. Okay, now I wanted to go over with you one more time each week. It's basically the same each week. There, there's five components, and um, I give you the required reading of the text, and you listen to and take personal notes, and I'm going to give you lecture notes um, over the lecture about New Testament history and backgrounds, which is this topic here. And then you complete a 350-word reading review. Now, I had 300 earlier. And I'm going to uh, change this back to 300. It's not 350. It's 300. See, I'm, I'm lowering it for you. And then you do your four posts and discussion section each week. And whenever you open up the week weekly discussion, you're going to see three questions from me. You address one of those questions with about 100 words. And then, you know, I call it a longer post. And then you do three responses to other students for a total of four posts each week in the discussion area. And then you do your blog entry where you write about whatever you want to as long as, as, as long as it's related to the course. And then I give you some extra resources, just some really cool websites that you can, you can uh, take a look at. They're both massive. Um, and then I have when the assignments due, June 1st at 11.59 Central Standard Time. All the times in this course refer to Central Standard Time because Plainview is the center of the universe, and we go by uh, Plainview time, Plainview, Texas time. Now I want you to notice, down here on week five, I have felt terrible about this for two years, but I can't find any other way to do it. Your midterm is due on June 29th at 11.59 p.m. I'm going to give you a week to do your midterm, so you can come and go as you please in the midterm area, you know, uh, taking it a little bit at a time over the week if you want. But you have the same amount of work during week five as during any other week. So this is the this is the hardest week of the course. But I gave you a shorter lecture during this time, and um, you have this pattern of the course down by the time you get to week five. So hopefully it won't be too terrible. But I feel bad about it. But um, that's the way. That's the way it has to be, because it could, because we have so much material and the um, courses um, we have so much material and the course term is so short. You know, I have to teach all this in ten weeks, so we had to do that. Sorry. Okay, well that's the deal. Um, I am easier to reach by email. I'll show you back up here at the top. I'm mean, easier to reach by this uh, Wayland email address. Um, I just got a brand new phone, so I can accept phone calls. I haven't been able to for the past year, so um, I'm still easing into that. So if you need me, contact me by email, and then secondary, contact me by phone. So I hope to see you in class.